welcome to Tony's British English. Now, guess where I am? I am in, rather, I am on an allotment. These are all allotments and it's a very important part of English culture. The idea is the council or private landowner, normally the council, will give you a piece of land. It's not yours, you rent it very, very cheaply and you grow everything you want. Flowers, vegetables, fruit, everything. And this is allotment land. <laughs> Atsui des, Atsui. So come with me and we're going to walk around the allotments, which are very, very, very English. Come with me. How much land do the council give you? Well, I'll show you. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha! They give you twenty meters by eight meters. Have a look at the care the gardeners give their allotment. Incredible. Now, where do allotments come from? Two things. Number one, if you live in a flat, you have no garden, but you can always come here and grow things. Blackberries. How did allotments start? Well, in the Second World War, World War II, England didn't have enough food. So Churchill said, dig, dig and dig. It was called Dig for Victory. So they opened up vast amounts of land for which people can grow food. After the war, the tradition carried on. And now we have this. Now this is my favorite allotment. Why? Because of the view. That over there is London. Listen. It's so quiet, but we are in London. Incredible. What better way to relax after a long week at work, come to allotment and garden. It's fantastic. You see here, we've got netting and underneath we've got, I don't know, probably, yes, black currants, which we make a Ribena from. Yeah. I think it could be raspberries or black currants. I don't know. Anyway, here we have compost. Now compost is all the old plants, all the kind of rubbish from last year is put into here, left for a year. It makes very good soil and you put that back onto your allotment. All types of flowers are grown here. The people who come here can grow anything they want. And the diversity of plants is quite incredible. The English and their gardens is very, very important. You would argue it's a cultural thing that English people love to garden. Secondly, it has no class. So the aristocracy right down 
to the working class, all of whom love gardening. So in many ways, it's a great social leveler. Good news. Let's move on. These are called sweet peas. Seko Matsuda. Akai, sweet pea. <laughs> Come on, mate. This sound is an ice cream van, which I'm not very, very happy with, but it stopped. Always the best part of any kind of music like that. Now, moving on. Welcome to the land of beans. Now, as you can see here, beans so fresh, fantastic. What better way than to relax? Okay, let's move on. I had to run because a gardener was after me. He thought I'd stolen his beans, but I haven't. Anyway, let's go. Now, you may be wondering why these particular canes have these brightly colored pots on them. The answer is quite simple, but a little bit strange. We can see the cane from the side, no problem. But we can't see the cane like this. It's difficult to see. So you put this on to protect your eyes. Every summer, gardeners go to hospital because they've had a cane in the eye. <laughs> You'd be surprised. It does happen. So now they put these on as a warning. Cool. Right, let's move on. Hello. Good afternoon. My Hello. name is Tony. Your name is? Dan. Dan. How long have you been here, Dan? Mm, nearly 20 years. 20 years. Which is your allotment? This one here. And what are you growing there? Um, we've got asparagus here, mm. which is over now, but um, was very prolific in June. And then further down, we've got lots of stuff. So these are beetroot here and uh, peas here um, they should be growing up a frame but i couldn't be bothered to do one this year <laughs> uh, these are some three different varieties of tomato coming up here uh, these ones are called uh, black russian tomato tomatoes here and these ones are italian ones they're beginning to go ripe ah they're Italian tomatoes. Yes. Yeah. Look, there's a, there's a ripe, ripening one there. And then over there are some small cherry tomatoes, yeah. which are delicious. Oh, in salads, yeah. Yeah. These ones are beans and potatoes oh. here, which are just beginning to um, be ripe. These, all these ones here are parsnips. And these will be ready in the winter. Oh, by the winter they'll be ready? Yeah. These are uh, globe artichokes. They're gorgeous. Yeah. The French love them. You dip them in. Yeah, in, uh, in mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Oishi. And this over here 
the Japanese will like this. This is um, this is a rare tree called a crab apple tree. Ah. And these are uh, you can't eat these, but you pick them and then you make a jelly from them. That's it. And you, you have them game. with meat. Yeah. Yeah. meat yeah. yeah. Oh. Ah. You can't beat raspberries. <laughs> you yeah. cannot beat raspberries. And cream, mm. a bit of sugar. Wow. Mm. Leeks. Leeks. Purple sprouting broccoli. Here. Fascinating. These are strawberries. Strawberries. Now in America they're called zucchini. Yeah. But in English what and do they know? what do they know? In English they're called courgette, which is French. Or from the French. Look, that's a melon. Huh? Yeah. What makes you come down here, Dan? What, what's the appeal? Uh, well, obviously to, to grow my own vegetables and fruit, but also to enjoy nature in the middle of London. I thought so. Yeah. It's about enjoying nature. Mm. Told you. <laughs> Brilliant. And you were, uh, well, I guess you eat all your own produce. I do. Yeah, last year, um, without blowing my trumpet too loudly, I managed to not buy any vegetables from February through till December. Wow. Mm. You bought no vegetables between February, February and, and December because and December, you grew them all here. Incredible, yeah. Dan. Incredible. Yeah. So do you come here every day or just the weekend? Uh, no, I try and get up here as much as I can, but it depends on, you know, commitments at home and work and... Mm. You know, I, I, in the growing season, which is March to about August, um, you've got to come up here more than just the weekend because everything just goes... Really? Mm. Including the weeds, of course. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the, the weeds. grass. Someone's got to cut the grass. Who cuts the grass? I do. <laughs> now, Dan, this is quite a personal question. How much does it cost a year to hire this? I don't know if I'm allowed to say... <laughs> Let's, let's say all but, all under, but under 100 pounds a year. Oh, that's good value, isn't it? Because look at the view, look at the yeah. space. Yeah. 100 pounds a year is yeah. pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic, Dan. Thank you very much that's indeed. Right. To, uh, yeah. Wave to Japan. Hello, Japan. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Put it there. <laughs> Cheers, Dan. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, that's me done. Thank you very much indeed for watching. That's the end of TBE. Now, I must admit, today's been really, really interesting. Why? Because people spend so much time gardening, and it's a very, very English thing to do. Today has been absolutely brilliant. Why? Because it just goes to show how much the English love gardening. And this gentleman here spends in the summer probably two, three, four days a week and all weekend tending to his allotment. And it's testament, testament to his hard work. It's been brilliant. And this is in London. <laughs> Can you believe it? This is in London. Okay, thanks a lot. I'm going home. Have a nice cold beer. See you soon, yeah? Bye!